नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुस् गुड मॉर्निंग एवर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द प्लेस वी स्टॉप्ड अबाउट द वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट रूपास रिलेटेड टू खामा बट नॉट एग्जैक्टली Karma Jaya Rupas. So, yeah, Rupas related to karma, but not exactly Karma Jaya Rupas. Uh, in the previous handout, it is the same handout that that will be used today, the one I gave previously. Uh, we discussed till uh, two point. We discussed two point one five two. We finished two point one five two. So now we have to start from two point one five three. And move forward. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we talked about certain if uh, effects upon the body of living beings made by the karma. If I recap, uh, there are uh, normally there are four types of rupas produced by uh, four types of causes that produce rupas in a body in a in a living being's body. One being the karma group, one being the karma, and the rupas produced by it called a karma jya. Rupas are called Kamaja Rupas. Uh, then uh, uh, we also, within the literature, within the doctrine, we find that uh, there are certain effects uh, made upon body parts of living beings due to the karma. The best example is the Buddha's uh, line, uh, qualities of a great man. The characteristics, the bodily characteristics he possessed. Uh, that are said to be of a great man mahapurusha lakkana in the lakkana sutta he said he mentioned that all these each and each and every uh, characteristic bodily trait was due to one of the good deeds that he has done in the past and then uh, we talked about uh, a rupa called kamma pachya these rupas were called kamma pachya they are not directly produced by karma the what the karma is affecting them karma is affecting them even the sound is affected by karma not directly in a linear manner that is karma causes the utuja rupas of the throat and in the mouth to appear in a certain way so it facilitates sweet voice and uh, karma affects the body of a certain being so it is built in a uh, attractive way if it is a kusala karma if it is akusala on the other hand uh, it will create some Uh, uh ugly or unattractive traits in the body so likewise uh, karma is affecting the uh, body uh, it affects the body affects the body so a uh, bodily bodies of living beings uh, appear according based on the karma then we also discussed about how a karma can uh, affect the health of a certain being if you remember health of a certain being Uh, it means buddha said if someone abstains from uh, killing living beings he may have long lives in sansara and that was explained uh, theoretically uh, when someone abstains from killing it makes a uh, uh, then uh, yes so what happens is uh, the kusala makes a certain effect in the mind stream it leaves a certain effect in the mind stream the same effect this is a very important topic in the theravada in, in terms of theravada teachings we call this uh, today's lecture would be uh, rupas related to karma i'm recapping what we have discussed last week still so when the sila a good sila for example abstaining from evil deeds when this chetana and the mental factors chetasikas when they arise and pass away within the uh, including the chitta they leave a certain trait in the mind stream not physically but because mind is occurring pa- arising and passing away it's an element though we cannot uh, locate it physically it's arising and passing away so this trait a certain trait is leave is left behind in the mind stream in pali we call this this is found in the commentary literature but we can find evidences from the texts 
uh, when I am discussing about these natures, I shall bring all the evidences from uh, all parts of the text to prove that these kind of natures have been discussed. Because these natures we normally don't discuss, we normally don't talk about them, these kind of traits. These traits are not a chitta, not a chetasika, not a rupa, but it is some sort of a remnant left behind by certain mentalities. Right? So this, this trait is uh, in the Pali, in the Pali text, we find it with the word visesa dhana. Visesa adhana. So this is divided. This is a. This can be a sandhi or samasa compound or a euphonic combination. Uh, both ways we can explain this. Visesa, visesa plus adhana. Adhana refers to planting something, leaving something behind. Establishing something, we can call it planting or burying, like leaving something behind. Then visesa is sort of a special trait, sort of a special nature. We can call a special nature, visesa. So visesa dhana, visesa dhana katva nirujjati. It leaves a special trait nature in the mind stream and passes away and passes away. So that is the normal function of these mentalities. So what happens is this trait left behind affects the entire mind stream. Affects the entire mind stream. Affects the entire mind stream. It affects. Then what happens if someone is doing a dana? Now if his his sila is unbroken, when he is doing a dana. May it be a great or a minor dana, or may it be uh, offering done to a beggar or to a Buddha or a virtuous person, unvirtuous person. Regardless of the uh, gravity of the dana, what happens is, if a dana was done, its capacity to last long, capacity to give a long life. Increases. Increases. Why is that? Because of the effects of this trait. Effects of this trait. Then what happens when this root, when this karma is producing a body, that body can sustain for a longer period. So it means it is healthy. Its immuni immunity is higher. Its functions are proper. It's properly functioning. So what was the reason? How the, how the karma was produced? Now this body has all types of rupa. It has kamaja, chittaja, utuja and aharaja. All types of rupas are affected by or uh, are, are healthy. The main part, the basic fundamental part is produced by the karma. And which karma caused the healthiness. Which karma caused the healthiness? Was it the dana karma or the sila karma? That is the point here. It is the point. Now, sometimes some person may do a very good deed, a very kusala karma, and he in a certain life, and he is born with another dana in another life, done in another life. This kusala can directly affect his body and make him healthy. That is a different case. That is a different uh, phenomenon going on. Because even though he was virtuous here, even though he's virtuous here, this is not going to affect greatly the dana done, done in another life. Done in another life. But in this case, since the dana was done in a mind stream where the sila was not broken, is directly affecting this kusala. So, this, the healthiness of the body is happening because of a linear connection of the karma. It's not a direct connection. It's not a direct effect. Now, Buddha's traits, he did certain kusala kammas in past lives. He did kusala long, means long before his attainment. Now, in his last life as a Buddha, for example, when he got the body as the Buddha, these karmas are causing his body to be 
attractive. They are directly affecting them. But in this case, what happens is, sila is affecting this karma, which produced the rebirth, and that karma is producing a body that is healthy. So that's why these two differences can be observed in uh, when we are discussing about the rupas related to karma. The so subtle difference is there, I hope you understand this point. Now, uh, today we are going to talk about the points starting from 2.153, 153, starting from 153. So the topics would be, we have Kamma Pachaya Chitta Samuttana. Kamma Pachaya Chitta Samuttana. Kamma Pachaya Chitta Samuttana. This is also quite interesting uh, uh, rupa. There are two types of such rupa. Kamma Pachaya uh, sorry, Kama Pacha Chitta Samuttana. This is uh, this is uh, uh, this was not I was talking about. Uh, this is uh, related to Kama Pacha Chitta Samuttana means Chitta Rupas produced by Vipaka Chittas. Vipaka Chitta plus Chetasikas. So Vipaka Chitta plus Chetasikas produce Chitta Rupa. They produce chitta jarupa. So, what is the relationship with, with the karma? Vipaka chitta chetasikas are directly produced by a karma. A karma. If you ask what is the proximate cause of chitta jarupa, it is the vipaka chitta chetasikas. These mentalities produce this matter. But those mentalities were produced by a karma. So, karma have a linear connection here. Linear connection. So, we call Kamma Pachya Chitta Samuttana. They are produced by a Chitta, produced by a Karma. Or we, the Karma is also a cause for these Rupas in a linear connection. Linear uh, connection. So that is the second type of Rupa because this is number two. Last week we talked about Kamma Pachya. The body parts and all these. Kama Pachya. Kama Pachya. Chitta Samuttan. Either second group. 1, 2.153. Then Kama Pachya Ahara Samuttana. Kama Pachya Ahara Samuttana. Kama Pachya Ahara Samuttana. What does this mean? Now Kama is producing Kamaja Rupa. In this case, it produces Vipaka Chitta Desika and those Chitta Desikas produce Chitta Rupa. Now here it is producing a Rupa, Kamaja Rupa. Kamaja Rupas are producing clusters. These clusters contain Oja. Oja is Ahara, nutriment. There is nutriment. This nutriment having reacted, reacted with the nutriment of the food we intake, right, having reacted with the food we partake, right, for example, particles, food particles, these food particles also have oja, right, having reacted with them, what happens is these rupas, it says even this can produce, these rupas produce some matter, we call it aharaja rupa. Aharaj Rupa. We, we have discussed them in brief in the beginning of this chapter, Rupa chapter. Aharaja Rupa. So these are directly produced by Ahara, that is to say Oja. Oja of what? Oja of clusters produced by Karma. Kamaja clusters, Kamaja Kalapa. Oja of Kamaja Kalapa. So these Rupas are called Kamma Pachya Ahara Samuttana. The Rupa produced by Oja in a Rupa Kalapa produced by a Karma. It means Oja in Kammaja Rupa Kalapas. Kammaja Rupa Kalapas. I think looking into this formula, you can also figure out what is Kamma Pachya Utu Samuttana. 
ಕಮಪಚ ಉತ್ತು ಸಮುಟ್ಟಾನ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಕಮಜ ರೂಪ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕಮಜ ರೂಪ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ತೇಜೋ ಧಾತು ದಟ್ ತೇಜೋ ಧಾತು ಪ್ರಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಉತುಜ ರೂಪ ಸೊ ದೋಸ್ ಉತುಜ ರೂಪಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಕಮ್ಮ ಪಚ ಉತ್ತು ಸಮುಟ್ಟಾನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಮ್ ಉತುಜ ರೂಪಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬೈ ತೇಜೋ ಇನ್ ಕಮ್ಮಜ ಕಲಾಪಾಸ್ ಐ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ ಬೂ ರೂಪಾಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೆಮ್ ಕಮ್ಮ ಪಚ ಉತ್ತು ಸಮುಟ್ಟಾನ ಉತ್ತು ಸಮುಟ್ಟಾನ ಬಟ್ ಕಮ ಪಚ ಉತ್ತು ಸಮುಟ್ಟಾನ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅನ್ ಅದರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಕಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಕಮ್ಮಜ ರೂಪ ದೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ಮಜ ರೂಪ ಕಂಟೇನ್ ತೇಜೋ ಅನ್ನದರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ತೇಜೋ ಈಸ್ ಉತ್ತು they contain uttu you can draw it in red color if you want right uttu and this uttu produce utuja rupa heat bond matter or bo- rupa made by tejo dhatu so what is the linear connection here these utuja rupas are produced by tejo in kamaja kalapas kamaja rupa kalapas those kamaja kalapas are produced by karma so these utuja rupas have a linear connection with karma they are related to karma not directly directly produced by karma so in the kama pachya what we discussed yesterday last week even most of the body parts the bulk of the body is mainly utuja rupas so these utuja rupas are affected by the karma affected by the karma now then kama pacha chitta samuttana some rupas are produced by mentalities which are direct production of karma then kama pacha aahara samuttana some rupas are produced by the oja or nutriment in rupa kalapas which are directly produced by karma in here some rupas are produced by tejo dhatu utu in rupa kalapas which are directly produced by karma that is the karma ja kalapas now the second type of kamma pacha utu is this rupa i i am not able to explain it in detail because uh, there is a uh, how to uh, we, we 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 it's it's quite difficult to explain uh, for me what is the direct mechanism here but i can give a overall idea about this now someone does a karma think someone does a karma dana for example a charity what happens is he dies the person he or she dies and is born in a for example divine realm we draw it in another color in a divine realm for instance deva loka deva uh, life right divine life we know that according to the literature divine beings when they obtain new lives mostly they get divine mansions together with their life and the quality of the mansion is proportionate to proportionate to the karma that they have done their size of the body the number of attendants they would get so they are all proportionate to the karma attendants are not a production of his karma they have been living there and they happen to come there or they happen to be moved to there or they have been suddenly born there some some they are, when people are dying in the world mostly it seems like the ones who are born in the divine realm they have been moved to a, because beings are born in 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 realms and not every deity is has that uh, authority power so some may be attendants some may be servants servants so there are that there's diversity in the deva realm hmm? but they are born with their own karma but think about the mansions mansions are direct productions of the deva who is born there who is born there now think about this deva got a certain mansion a beautiful one and also think about the clothes he is wearing clothes are not body parts 
all these we consider mansions, clothes, they are all in the Theravada teachings are called Uttuja Rupas. Uttuja Rupa. The existence of such Rupas, mansions and clothes are found in the teachings. We have direct teachings related to them from the Tipitaka itself. There is no argument about it. The Buddha is of, of that idea. But categorizing them under Uttuja Rupa, categorizing them under Uttuja Rupa, we do it based on Abhidharma and commentarial literature. Hmm. And it also makes sense because Kamaja Rupas are within the animate bodies. Kamaja Rupas are found in animate bodies. We cannot say his Kamaja Rupas were found here. So we cannot call them Kamaja Rupas and it is not logical to call them Chitta Rupas. They were not created by someone due to any psychic power or some, some other thing. These are productions of karma. When you know the doctrine of karma, it's obvious if you adhere to that. Hmm? Then how do we categorize these Rupas? Since they are external, since they are not a part of the living being, the only way to categorize them as Uttuja Rupas. Obviously, it's different from the Uttuja Rupas of the body because they are directly, directly Uttuja Rupas of the body are directly affected by karma. And when, we, when, the, uh, uh, when something happens to this body, it affects our mind even. Hmm? That's why sickness and all these causes uh, changes in the mind. But if something happens to the mansion, Unless I see it and feel, feel it like get defilements regarding it, unless we are not going to be affected by this. Hmm? We are not going to be affected by this. So these are surely external rupas should be categorized as Utuja. But we see there is a huge relationship between the karma that they have done. So how do we categorize them? These rupas have to be called Utuja. And they are greatly affected by karma. Kamma pachya utuja. Kamma pachya utuja. And they close to, now we discussed about kamma pachya rupas. Uttaraja rupas of a certain body, of a living being, of a living body of a certain living being, are also affected by karma. So it appeared to be very beautiful or unattractive based on the nature of the karma, whether it's good or bad. So these also have a similar nature. If the karma was so great, the mansion was so beautiful, attractive, and even uh, a, a lady once gave five uh, uh, lambs to a certain Buddha, and she got five lambs in her mansion, which never extinguished, which were always burning. So this lamp is a direct production of the karma that she gave, and it, it, we can see a huge relation. And she was called Pancha Padipika in the Apadana. Apadana or Vimano, I think it's Apadana. She became Arahant later on in this life. Now we can see a relationship. The problem is, which I said I am not able to uh, explain everything here, was these Rupas, the problem is now Uttuja Rupas, the definition of Uttuja Rupas, if you remember, Uttuja Rupas, which we have not discussed in detail, but I have given the definitions already. Every Kalapa contains Tejo Dhatu. It's not in a, in a one area, it's everywhere in the Rupa Kalapa. This Tejo Dhatu, having come to the persisting stage, produces another Rupa Kalapa we call Utuja Kalapa. Utuja Kalapas. These Rupa Kalapas can be produced by any of the causes. But Tejo Dato da, te in all the Kalapas has this capacity to produce Uttuja Rupas. This is the basic definition of Uttuja Rupa. Rupa produced by Tejo Dato. I haven't seen like there is no such a definition other than that for Uttuja Rupa. So if the commentators say this is Uttuja Rupas, we have to go to the assumption that these Rupas were produced by some rupas which have been existing in the divine realm. Sort of a transformation. Think about some matter or energy is existing here due to effect of a certain karma. They turn into, if I say in a phys physics terminologies, 
the energy of the Higgs boson, whatever, the energy field, somehow it's affecting and certain particles are made, halapas are made. Or, so in physics way, but for example, if, we, if I explain in the Abhidhamma point of view, there were small kalapas in this area, utuja kalapas, either it's air or whatever in the divine realm. And these kalapas affected by the karma, affected by the karma, produces this mansion. If we follow, if we stick to this definition, if we stick to this definition, or the next possibility is, it's against the definition, but when I read the doctrine with my readings, my own readings, when I've been reading like few times when I've, I've been staying in this doctrine, studying the doctrine for a longer period. So I also feel it is a, there is a possibility to explain that these Uttuja Rupas are directly produced by karma, are directly produced by karma, new rupa is born, but since it is happening outside the body, since it's not mixed with Kamaja Rupas, since it's happening outside the body, we call it Uttuja Rupas. We call it Uttuja Rupas. So if so, Uttuja Rupas have two definitions. Uttuja Rupas have two definitions. First is, first is, Rupas produced by Tejo Dhatu. The second would be any Rupa produced outside a living body, regardless of its cause, should be called Uttuja Rupas. Why did I bring such a possible definition? Though it seems like against the uh, basic fundamental definition given before, we have we encounter a similar definition when we come to the Chitta Rupas. In Chitta Rupas, we have a definition called Chitta Pachya Utuja Rupas. Chitta Pachya Utuja Rupas. So what are Chitta Pachya? It also has two definitions. The first is Chitta produces Chitta Rupas. These, these Chitta Rupas has Tejo and they produce Utuja Rupa. That is like the first definition. Kamma produce Kamma Rupas. These Rupas have Utu, Tejo and they produce Utuja Rupa. So likewise Chitta produce Chitta Rupas. They contain Tejo Dhatu and they produce Chitta Rupas. That is called Chitta Pacha Utuja Rupas. The second definition is related to psychic powers. We know that some beings are capable of creating certain things, certain things in the outside world. Some are just we can be vis visualized, it can be just seen, couldn't be touched. Some even can be touched. Some can be touched. Hard material is produced. So how it happens, Dhamma is like, it says it, it's something which is difficult to be explained. What is the phenomenon behind this? So that's why we term it uh, Iddi Visaya. Iddi Visaya. Visaya is the subject of Iddi, psychic powers, is Achintaniya. Achintaniya means something that cannot be completely grasped by the wisdom, by an ordinary person. Mm. The qualities of a Buddha, wisdom of a Buddha, and there are four spheres that we cannot entirely understand. Mm. So now, someone is creating with his psychic power some rupa outside. And that rupa, this, we, we may say that these rupas are related to devas, devas sort of invisible beings, that we cannot see them. So when the doctrine says we cannot see them, it shows that they have some sort of subtle rupas that may not be sensitive to our body or our eye. So we are talking about something subtle and we can, we can assume that, okay, this is something beyond our scope. So it, it is possible some subtle rupas are happening in a different realm due to which, are, uh, which, which we cannot uh, understand with our ordinary experience. But when we come to the Iddi, we have doctrinal explanations, even in the direct sutras, Vinaya. This new material can be felt. The person creating an earth on the sky could walk on it, could walk on it. And he, he even can make someone else to walk on it if he wishes. So likewise, and, and it, 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 now there is a story in Vishuddhi Magga, when one 
serpent was going to be attacked by a huge bird, the one Arahant created a mountain, hiding it. And the bird struck on the rock and he went away. I think he didn't die, he went away. He, he got hurt. So it's a phys the physical impact was there. So what is this Rupa created? Is it also, now we have two definitions. The Uttuja Rupas were already there and new Rupas were created. Or is it directly the Chitta is producing Rupas? Mm. Rather than saying that in this space, the Rupa was transformed into a physical level, like a hard level, one can assume that it was created by the Chitta. That possibility is because it says it's, it's a creation of that's how the word comes. It was produced by the Chitta, but still we call it Uttuja Rupa. So if we stick to the basic definition, it should be that Uttuja Rupas that have been existing there created it, affected by the Abhinya Chitta. Or new Rupas were uh, produced for a temporary period because things created by the Abhinya cannot last for a long period like natural stuff. But there are stories that such net effects were there in some, for, for, for years sometimes. But I don't think it could last for a very long period like, like, like till the end of the kappa. So that's why I said there is a possibility of assuming that maybe is it that these titta, the uttuja rupas are directly produced by karma rather than affecting the uttuja kalapas here or kalapas here and making them to produce Uttuja Rupas, which became the mansion. Right? So these are all explained within the borders of the Theravada tradition. Because if I give this explanation to a different community, they may think that I, I, I talk nonsense. Right? Because this is very difficult to be explained empirically because we don't have any evidences scientifically for such things happening. Because we are not talking about virtual particles which vanishes, this we are talking about, certain realities that last for long, for, for thousands of millions of years in the Deva realm, in the Bhakma realm, for kappas, and still they can be used. Virtual particles are just, they vanish quickly, and they don't create such a surface as far as I know. So therefore, within the borders of Theravada, I'm, I'm discussing on these matters. So, there are two definitions, 2.155. There are two definitions to the term, Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana. The first was given. Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana means cooperatively produced by the heat, Tejo Dhatu, in Kamma Bon Rupa Kalapas. It's not only heat, it can be coldness as well. Under the four basic characteristics, they should be listed under Uttaja Rupas. Now, sometimes Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana refers to things such as a mansions, such as the mansions and food of deities. And the wheel of a universal monarch, in another point, wheel of a universal monarch, it disappears, it says. And this wheel, according to the literature, according to the Buddha's teachings itself, is used by the monarch to travel around the entire world. And this is visible to every human being. And that is a sign of his monarchy, his might. And when he passes away, it disappears. It doesn't get destructed, it doesn't get decayed like other wheels. And it is located in the sky against the gravity, like it's, it's levitating. And when the monarch is about to die or is about to renounce the world, or uh, actually, yeah, uh, not he, he, when he's about to die or when, uh, if I remember, when the Buddha has appeared, a Buddha has appeared and preached the Dhamma, not his enlightenment, after he has preached the Dhamma, or the monarch's life is going to end, then this wheel from its original location comes down. If it was located here, if this is the mansion, it's in a high position, everyone could see that, that is the symbol of his might or monarchy of kinship, and this comes down, a visible distance. A visible distance, it comes down. So people know something has happened, something is going to happen. This is a sign either that the monarch is going to die or the Buddha has uh, 
if I'm correct, he's going to die, or maybe after his death, I forgot that. I, I cannot exactly be uh, sure about that, because my memory is not clear on that. Uh, but after the Buddha has preached the Dhamma, given the first Dhamma discourse, then this falls down. Because now his monarchy is being replaced by the monarchy of a Sammasambuddha. Universal monarchy, we call. His might is felt to the entire world. His might is felt to the entire world. Not after his enlightenment. Because he started to yield his power, yield his influence to the world after the first Dhamma discourse. That's why the Devas used to say, Appati Vattiyang Samane Neva Brahmane Neva. Bara Nasiyang Isipatane Migadhaye Dhamma Chakkang Pavattitang Appati Vattiya. He had made the, he has turned the wheel of the Dhamma. This is the wheel of the universal monarch. So when the wheel of the Dhamma is being rolled forward, is being, is being made to uh, work, is being made to move, to circle, then it cannot be stopped or it cannot be reversed. Now his influence is going to be not only the entire human world, the most, uh, the, the, the influence uh, part of the human world, not the entire world actually, and the divine realms. So this, his monarchy has been uh, replaced. So it falls down. When he, the Buddha has preached the Dhamma, there's two options would be possible for a monarch. Options means two phenomena can work. Either he dies, his life has expired, or he will, he will give up the household life and become a, renounce the world. Most probably, he would end up being a disciple of the Buddha. Because he's such a wise person, he would not take a wrong doctrine, he would not follow a wrong doctrine or follow a wrong path, because he's such a great person in that very life. So now, there's something extra information for us. So this wheel is Kamma Pachya Utu, is based on the Kamma of that universal monarch. He has accumulated a great deal of karma in the past lives, and even in this life, he has practiced, not just obtained by the past merit. We know that Samma Sambuddhahood, a person has to have done a lot of paramita in the past lives, but it's not going to, paramita is not going to offer him this. He has to go and practice under the Bodhi tree for some days at least. Only then he would get the enlightenment, Samma Sambuddhahood. Likewise, to be a Chakravati, he has to practice Dasa Raja Dhamma the 10 good qualities of a king. And he also needs to observe uh, Uposata Sila during the Uposata days. So when he is doing so for a long, some period, on Uposata day, suddenly this wheel will appear. Then with that wheel, he is able to conquer the entire world. That is the phenomenon. And this wheel, after his death, would disappear. Or after he has renounced the world, it would disappear. The best example is given in the Sutra, in the Mahapadana or Mahanidana, for example. I, I forgot. Chakravati uh, Sihana, Visutta, I forgot, in Digha uh, When the father renounced, the father, universal monarch, the father renounced, and the son was going to rule, and suddenly one day it disappeared. Then the son was surprised what happened. So then he came to the father, recluse father, and said, It has disappeared. Then he said, No. The universal monarchy is not inherited, is not, a, is not obtained as a higher. It is something that you have to gain by your own effort. So then he gave the advice, this is how to follow. Then he followed the proceedings, then he, to him also, it appeared. So likewise, this is Kama Pachya Uttu. So what is it? This is a visible thing, this, is, this can be used for traveling. So what is the product, what is the proximate cause of this? Is it directly produced by karma? Since it's outside, we call it Utuja Rupa, or the karma is affecting the Utu in the natural world, Tejo Utuja, Utuja Kalapa in the natural world and producing this. Right? I'm not able to give a specific answer even based on the literature. Right? Wheel of a universal monarch, which are outcomes of past karma. The female figure, which was following a certain monk, this was only visible actually. One monk, from the day he ordained, a very strange phenomenon happened. 
wherever he goes, he is seen by other people to be following by a follow to be followed by a female. Because he, as a deva, made such a bad deed and caused a dispute among two monks. Like one monk went into the uh, forest to urinate, if I remember, or defecate, whatever. Then he, when he is coming up, coming out from the forest, before he came, the deva, with the appearance of a woman, came out from the forest, uh, uh, forest arranging her clothes. So the other monk was shocked, and suddenly the other monk came, the friend came. Then he had a doubt whether there is something wrong has happened with the female. Then he accused him. Then there was a bitter taste going on. There was a disagreement. These arguments were going on. And later on, they figured it out. Okay, nothing has happened. And I think the Deva came and confessed. I'm sorry that this, I did this and all this. But it showed that the friendship was never as before. Friendship was never as before. Because of the misunderstanding. So, this karma making a dispute among two virtuous monks and causing a doubt in other one's mind. This Deva, born in the our dispensation, had the merits to become an Arahan. But after his ordination, after his ordination, not before, after his ordination, till he became Arahan, always he was seen being followed by a female. Even King Kosala had a doubt because even King Kosala saw it and he was shocked why this woman is always following this monk. Wherever he goes into a room, she follows. Wherever he goes into a dining hall or whatever place, he, she follows. She is seen everywhere following him. And this, this was not a divine being. This was not anything. This was a figure created because of her, his bad deed. Of his bad deed. Only he couldn't see that. The monk couldn't see it. Others could see it. So lots of accusations were going on. So this is also a Kamma Pacha Uttu Samuttana. Uttu Samuttana. While the Buddha was alive. The female figure which was following a certain monk while the Buddha was alive. Till the anime attainment of his Arahantud should also be put under this category. When looking into these corporeal matters. In terms of the basic fourfold for classification. They fall under the category of Uttuja Rupa. They fall under the category of Uttuja Rupa. Right. Then we also have another, this would be our final uh, topic today. So far we have discussed, Kamapacha was the last week. Kamapacha Chitta Samuttana, yes, Kamapacha Ahara Samuttana. And we gave a, a long uh, time, took long time for Kamapacha Uttu Samuttana. Then we have Kamma Vipakaja Abada. Abhada is sickness. Abhada. Right, number five. Kamupakaja Abhada. Abhada is sickness. Sickness caused by Kama as a vipakar of karma. Kama vipakaja Abhada. In the ultimate sense, it refers to entire unpleasant Uttuja Rupas that happen to arise due to the distortion of equilibrium of the four great elements. Flame, air, bile and air in the body by past karma deeds or the bodily pain that arises due to such sickness. So, karma vipakaja abhada refers to two things, mainly utuja rupas. Now think about our body, some because of past karma, a cancer arises or sort of a change happens, unpleasant or un, uh, inconduce, unconducive change happen in the body. So these rupas of which the equilibrium is broken, has been disturbed, right? Disturbed. These utuja rupas affected by affected by karma is abada. What happens when this the equilibrium of these utuja rupas are broken? That affects the remaining three types: chittaja, aharaja, and kamaja. Then the entire body, the entire all types of rupas are affected. But the initial trigger happens by a past karma. It's always a akusala karma. 
We never get sick due to a kusala karma. We may die due to a kusala karma. That is possible. It mainly happens in the woeful realms. Beings may die and be born in a good realm. But we never, in whatever realm, would never get sick due to the effect of a kusala karma. Cannot, cannot happen. Because we know it's an unpleasant thing. It's an unpleasant thing. Death, yes, it's an unpleasant thing, but it can result to a good destination. Then one can argue, can't it be that some death is caused by a kusala through a, a abhada, through a sickness? I don't think so. Such deaths mostly happen to beings in the woeful realm. They die. If it is caused by a kusala karma, then mostly it should be a peaceful death. Hmm? It should be a peaceful death. death. What the death does is, it's not killing the being actually, it prevents the akusala karma giving, causing that life, continuing death. Uh, akusala karma is continuing in a certain bad realm mostly, and this kusala prevents it and give a good birth. So when this prevented, we call it death. It's not pleasant to the living being, obviously death is not a pleasant thing, but it dies, he, he, it terminates the life and produces a new life. It may also happen in a good realm in order to give a good birth in future, but very rarely. I, I haven't heard about such stories much. Right? So then, then the next definition of abada is pain. Dukkha sahagata kaya vijnana, or actually mostly the vedana in the kaya vijnana, pain. This is a mentality, mentality. When this is affecting, the outcome would be pain. When the rupas are uh, equilibrium is broken, so when a, a flesh, lump of flesh is appearing or cancer is appearing, we know that a lot of pain going on in the body due to the distortion of rupas caused by the karma. So in the Theravada teachings, mainly we find abhada is pain. Abhada is pain. In some places, the rupas can also be termed as the abhada, the sickness. So here, abhada or these rupas are not production of kamma. That's what we want to understand. Kamaja rupas are very subtle. Kamaja rupas are not sort of unpleasant in a body. Hmm? Their quality may reduce, like some person may have a good chakku pasada while other may have a weak chakku pasada. That is a different case. But normally kamaja rupas do not cause harm to the body. The harm is mainly made by something taken from outside of by akusala karma. And it affects the utuja rupas first. Then when the equilibrium is broken, it affects the other rupas as well. And this causes the pain to happen. So when we say abhada, we mainly refer to the pain actually. Sickness is the pain. And also we can call sickness is the ru distorted rupa in the body. Mainly utuja rupas, but it can refer to all the four types of rupas as well. Hmm? So this is also not a production of karma, but an effect of the karma. Right, so this would be our lecture. Next week I'll be talking another two few phenom few interesting phenomena, uh, like uh, how it affects the outside world, how it affects the others living other living beings, and also some subjective changes in the experience. How karma is causing that? So today we discuss four points actually. Uh, karma pachya was discussed last week. The body affected by karma, how it changes. Kamma pachya titta titta samuttana. Kamma producing resultant mentalities and these resultant mentalities producing chitta jarupa. So they are called kamma pachya chitta samuttana rupa. In, this, in a similar way, kamma pachya har samuttana are kamma is producing karma jarupas. The oja nutriment in these rupas produce ahara jarupas. They are called kamma pachya ahara samuttana. Then we had kamma pachya chitta samuttana. Kamma is producing Kamma Jarupas, sorry, Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana, beg your pardon. Kamma produces Kamma Jarupas and these Kamma Jarupas contain Tejo Dhatu and they produce Uttu Jarupas. They are called Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana. And the second Kamma Pachya Uttu Samuttana is, which I was unable to give a, 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 a very precise interpretation, 
Kamma, because of karma, certain mansions, clothes, food are being produced, and the wheel of a universal monarch is found, arises. So these are called utudarupas, affected or uh, caused by karma. So there's a very direct relationship with the karma. Those rupas have a direct relationship with the karma based on the teachings, the sutras themselves. But they are not categorized as utujarupas. So we call it kamma pacha utuja. The point is, are they outcomes of the already existing Tejo of already existing Kalapas, Utuja or whatever, the outside is Utuja already. So, uh, were they outcome of the Tejo Datu of Utujarupas or are they directly produced by Karma? We call them Utuja when they appear in the outside world. That is something to be taught again, taught again. Then Kama Pachya Abhada, Kama Vipakaja Abhada means uh, the Rupas that have been distorted, not produced newly, distorted Rupas due to the effect of karma, right? For example, when the karma is affecting, certain food that we take may produce, like when they are transformed into the body parts. We know that even in, in, according to science, our body parts are made out of the food that we intake. That's how our mass is growing. It's obvious, it's obvious. What we have here in the body is the food we eat. The food we eat. Hmm? Or uh, the cells are growing cells are growing. Very rarely oxygen or something that we, we may take intake. But when the cells are growing, new mass is accumulated according to the uh, laws of physics. Uh, we have to intake some mass and that mass is taken by food. And that our body parts are food actually. Right? So this, either the karma is affecting this, the procedure and causing some bad types of rupas to happen when the food is transformed into or either it directly affects the bodily parts which have been already there and causes some changes. And these rupas are called Kamavipakaja Abhada or the pain that arises. It's very similar to Kamapachya. Kamapachya causes the body, when the body is formed, to happen in a nice way, attractive way, in a conducive way for the sweet voice. For, for certain skills. For example, if someone possesses certain skills in a sport or in, in a certain craft due to the past karmas, possibility is there. He has the capacity to jump high or run fast due to the past karmas, like Angulimala did. Mm. So what happens is, this uh, karma is causing to Rupa to have such, such capacities. In the same way, karma can cause, not by birth, while we are living, or sometimes it can be by birth, by some sickness I inherited by birth. So, karma call affects our body and it deteriorates the capacity, abilities, and we call it sickness normally. It's not decay, I'm not talking about decaying sickness, right? So, this is also rupas related to karma. So, I conclude the lecture. Uh, and all this, this attempt is now when we do the rupa chapter, uh, other than directly kamaja, chittaja, utuja, aharaja, these related ones. Rupas related to Kamma, Rupas related to Chitta. There will be another uh, important section like this when you finish the Chitta the Rupas. Then very briefly, Rupas related to Utu and Rupa related to Aharaja, Ahara. So the attempt, it seems like the attempt was of the Theravadians to give an exhaustive definition, exhaustive uh, description about the Rupa. So each and every Rupa that we find in the world could be categorized either into any of these categories. Either it's a Fourfold method, Kamaja, Tichida, Utuja, Aharaja, or something related to these main causes. So, so in the end, when we study this according to Theravada perspective, we'll be able to categorize to every Rupa, whether, whether it's a Kamapacha Utu or direct, or the, like Kamapacha Chittaja or whatever, we'll be able to categorize them, right? So this would be the explanation, and this helps us to do the contemplation deeply and because all these rupas are produced by causes. And so then they are non-self and there's no inherited self there. And uh, so it shows that uh, there's nothing to be considered as mine or I or to be nice or attractive in terms of ultimate, in, in the ultimate sense. Uh, so it helps us to get rid of the attachment towards this rupa. Yeah, include the lecture. It's time for, to, for the question and answer session. Uh, 
Hello, Pea. I have some question. So basically, I have I didn't attend the last lectures, and it's been a long time that I studied this. So please help me arrange my thoughts so that I can voice my question in the most understandable way. So from my understanding, and please correct me, Polly. There's a four types of rubas. Yes. Yeah. Got so Kamajaruba, caused by Kama. Jita Jaruba, caused by Jita. Uh, Tejo. Untuk Jerupa, ya. Untuk Jerupa, caused by Tejo, ya. Tejo, Tejo is weather. Uh, Tejo is so, the heat element, I would call. Uh, in, okay. uh, right, right. Yeah. And the last one is Utuja Rupa. Aha, aha. Utuja is third. Aha Raja, yes. Okay, Aha Raja Rupa is caused by nutrients. So these four are the basic Rupas that that create our body, that cause that. These have the four courses. So I don't understand like where is this lecture fit into this? So is it in all of the parts rubas or is it in one of each? Does uh, it make sense? You mean what we discussed today? And yes, and a previous lecture. Because from my understanding from your lectures is that all these four, if you can write it on the board, it would be easier for, for me to tell you. So all these four is all from Kama Jarubas, and it's, it's Kama Jaruba affecting the element inside that Ruba. Does it make sense? So Kama is the main cause. From my understanding, it's Kama is the main cause, and because of Kama, they have this Kama how to say causes that affecting jitta, that's affecting uh, the weather, and it's affecting the, the nutrients. So basically, it's always from one com instead of four separate, like equal categories of rubas, it's only from kama, go down to kama jarubas, and from this kama jaruba, it jitas or weather or the heat element in each particle of the rubas are affected. Yeah. So, uh, first we need to understand there are five kamaja, right? Chittaja, Utuja, and Aharaja. Yes. Right? These are the five, four basics. So, what we are now discussing is rupas of the other categories. All the things, all the rupas that we have been discussing now are of the other categories. But now, Kamma produce Kamaja rupa. Chitta produce Chitta Jarupa, Tejo produce Utu Jarupa, Oja produce Ahara, Nutriment produce o Ahara Jarupa. Right, this is the basic. So, what we are discussing now falls into any of these three categories in the fourfold method. In the fourfold method, all what we have discussed falls into any of these. Any of these. But what happens is, Karma, if, we, if something is produced by, kam, like for example, Bhava Rupa, Chakku Pasada, Chakku Pasada, Sota Pasada, all these Rupas are directly Kamaj Rupas. Right? So, there are also Chittaja, Utuja, Aharja. But some of them, not all, not all, some of these Rupas have a certain relationship with the Kama. Either it is affecting the chitta which produces chitta jarupa, or mostly it affects the tejo which produces the te, uh, utu jarupas, it affects the oja which produces the ahara jarupas, or it is produced by a tejo which was produced by karma, that is called linear connection. Tejo was produced by a karma, kamma ja tejo, and this produces tejo, utu jarupa. So still we can find out a relationship. Sometimes it's affecting the tejo, affecting the tejo, affecting the tejo, not producing tejo, affecting the tejo, so tejo produces something different. If the effect was not there, it would have produced otherwise. In some cases, tejo itself was produced by karma and that tejo produces a new rupa. So likewise, we find a linear causation or a direct effect. So that is what we are discussing now. So, in the fourfold, every rupa can be categorized into these four. There's no issue at all. But when we go into detail, we find some of the chittaja 
have a certain relationship with the karma, either a linear causation or a direct effect, effect to the cause. Sometimes Tejo is producing this, this may directly affect the product as well. That is also possible. That is mostly in sickness what happens. It is causing, it may ha cause, uh, 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 affect this and then the generation is affected. So likewise, whatever effect or a linear causation. The point is, it's related to karma, some rupas. Some of them, for example, now think about this, a sum, another group, for you, sorry. Uh, right? Now some, utuja, for example, have a relationship with chitta. Now Tejo is producing this. It's under the category of Tejo, but this Chitta is affecting Tejo to affect this, or it's directly affecting this. So likewise, we are not breaking the four-fall method, but we are showing within the four-fall method, there are some interrelationship. That's, that's what we are doing here. Okay, yeah. So if I understand you correctly, let's just talk about Jaitaja, Utujas and Arjajit, I mean Rubas. So let's say if I understand you, this is my understanding, right? From let's say Jaitaj to uh, Rubas have three courses. One is directly from Jaita. Correct. Two Correct. it is Kama directly affecting the Jaita that's causing Jaitaj Rubas. To have the second relationship, and the third relationship is that the how to say indirect lineage or indirect affected affection from the karma to Jaita and Jaita producing rubas. Correct. Correct. Exactly. So Jaita Rupa have three kinds. One is directly from Jaita. One is directly from the karma affecting the Jaita and the Jaita producing Jaita. Uh, Jaita Rubas and the third one is Kama leaving some lineage or leaving some straight. Correct. That Jaita, that is causing the Jaita uh, Rubas. Yes? Perfectly correct, yeah. Okay, so then what is the difference between the direct relation from Kama to the Jaita and the lineage that the Kama leave on that Jaita that producing Jaita Rubas? Ah, you mean? That. So, yeah. It's, it's, so the it's, categories, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. We're exactly. not going to discuss, but we're talking about the, the karma, that giving the direct relations and the karma leaving, you say, the lineage of the straight, that causing the Jaita Jarubas. Correct, correct. I know, but what's the difference? Uh, the difference is now, for example, it's better we talk about this rather than Chitta, okay? Uh, chitta one, we have only mostly two definitions. Uh, kamma producing chitta, chitta producing tejo, uh, so rupa, right? Kamma producing chitta, okay. chitta producing rupa. There can be some information which I am not uh, confirming, but some effects, kamma affecting the mind of certain beings. For example, uh, if you know the Buddha, Bodhisattva took a long period to attain, uh, find out the correct path, right? So it took a long period for him. He was following different path for six years. So in Apadana Pali, sorry, he says, that was mainly his wisdom didn't arise in him because of the insult he made to Kasapa Buddha. So Chitta sometimes directly affecting the, uh, Kamma affecting the Chitta. It is not a Vipaka. Kamma producing Chitta is a Vipaka Chitta Chetasika. Kamma producing, Kamma affecting the Chitta means it affects his Javana Chitta, Kusala Chitta even. It doesn't, it, it doesn't let the kusala to happen. Instead, akusala is happening or weak kusala is happening due to this effect. So what happens? This affected chitta rupa is there. Rup, chitta rupa arising due to chitta thus affected is, it's, like, it's not a production. Chitta is not a production affected by karma. Now, if you think about Tejo Dhatu, Kamma okay. Yeah, okay. So, so, okay, so giving that definition of yours. So the first one is Kamma directly affected 
the jeta will get affected in Jaguna jeta. So let's say the example that you get in the Buddha case, that's why the Buddha followed the wrong path for six years. But when his leave diminished or his leave disgrace actually affecting the Vipaka jeta. No, because Javana. Uh, you mean. Because, because, like, previously you say that, not in the, like, in your just this lecture, you say that when the karma affecting is affecting the Vipaka Jetas and the Jetasika. But Vipaka is also the result of another Jeta or another thing. But if not, so when it's affecting the Jeta, is it affecting the, you know, like the. Not the Vipaka Jetas or just the, the, the how to say, the non Vipaka Jetas? Uh, both possible. Both possible. You are making it like very sharp now. So, uh, both possible. For example, if you take the Bhavanga of the Buddha, was produced by a Kusala, right? Because he was born as a result of Kusala. Now, this, from this Bhavanga, his Javana arises. Manodwara Ajana. So, his Akusala of insulting the Kasapa, Buddha, either affected Bhavanga, possibility is there, either it affected the Manodva, Ravajana and Javanas. Both are possible. But they are not production, produced by this Akusala Chitta. No. They are produced by present causes. This is produced by the Kusala which gave the rebirth of the Buddha. So, now for example, the now, Buddha's Bhavanga is producing Chitta Jarupa, CJ. This Bhavanga is produced by a Kusala Kamma. It produces Bhavanga. This Bhavanga produces Chitta Jarupa. So, we have a linear causation here. Cause of the cause. Kamma is the cause of the cause of this Chitta Jarupa. But here, what is happening? Now, Chitta Jarupa is produced here. Chitta Jarupa. This Chitta Jarupa's cause is Chitta, but its cause is not the karma. This cause has been affected by karma. So its limitation is confined. So that is the difference. Okay, got it. Right? So the okay. same right, the same way, karma, for example, karma producing Kammaja Rupa. This Kammaja Rupa producing, this Kammaja Rupa has Tejo, right? Tejo, Kammaja Kalapa has Tejo. This Tejo is producing Utuja Rupa. So what is here? Cause of the cause. Kamma is the cause of the cause this, of this Utuja Rupa. Linear causation. Actual Proximate cause is Utuja, but its cause is Kamma. So we see a relationship. The second is, actually, it's better to draw uh, this produces Kamma Jarupa. Then Tejo, now, for example, Utuja Rupa, Utuja Kalapa. This is also Kamma Kalapa, okay? Kalapa. Kamaja Kalapa also have Tejo. This Tejo is producing Utuja Rupa, UJ. This Utuja Rupa, this Utuja Rupa was produced by another Utu, another Tejo. It's produced by another Tejo, producer, but affected by Kama. Buddha's Mahapurisa, Lakana, he got the signs of a great man. These signs are mostly Utuja. They are produced by Tejo, which was produced by another Tejo. Right? So, when this great lakana of a human is produced, what happens is, the cause has been affected positively. So, they appear to be very attractive. So, here, cause of the cause. cause of, come by the cause of the cause. This is, Kamma is the affecting the cause. Not the cause of the cause. Okay, so basically, three conditions. One is the correct, right? Like whatever karma, theta, utu are nutrients. Yeah. So that's direct, the causing the producing the karma. 
So the other one is karma. For let's say for for data, data and nutrient, karma is the direct cause. Or the third one you say is karma is the cause of the cause. So there is one more step for the ruba to be produced. So and that is the difference between the direct cause from karma and the, the karma is causing the cause of the cause. So this is like indirect cause. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, my question is on two aspects. One, you have been uh, talking about the uh, the Divya Loka and uh, uh, Chakravartis. So all due to merits, meritorious deeds, uh, those are Kamma Vipakas and uh, Kamma Jarupas that you have been taking as examples. My question is about the, uh, going lower down uh, into the uh, hell realm. And uh, there are the uh, question is really not uh, the physical things, but also uh, we read about uh, the executioners, the Yamapalla. Uh, is Yamapalla a creation of karma uh, or he, uh, are they conscious beings? They are also there due to some of their own uh, uh, bad uh, karmas. According to the information in the literature, yes. these beings are not born in the hell. These are beings belonging to the Chatu Maharajika lower realm. Chatu Maharajika has a wide scope uh, yeah. one is the divine realm where the divine yeah. beings are enjoying pleasures then there is another space between the human realm and the Chatu Maharajika divine realm we call it Chatu Maharajika Nikaya in terms of 31 realms it's still categorized under Chatu Maharajika so in this space we find beings such as Gandabha, Kumbanda, Yakha Naga and all. Naga actually belongs to the animal realm. Sometimes the word Naga may refer to uh, Chatu Maharajika, certain beings, possibility is there. So these beings, most of them naturally are of fierce nature. They are wicked. So they enjoy hurting others. So in even human realm who are born in the Kusala Kamma sometimes do like to execute, do like to be executors when the government calls for, uh, for the post of execution, executor, some, some beings come, they do come. Maybe they come because uh, in order to uh, establish justice in the country or maybe they enjoy uh, torturing others. During the king's times, monarchies, yes, there were some beings who really enjoyed executing or killing others, hurting others. So likewise, these beings who are naturally wicked, they like to hurt others, even they sometimes disturb humans. That's why the four guardians kings are appearing in order to uh, maintain the law and order in their realm. Because that realm has to be uh, ruled by an iron fist, with iron fist, because they are very, very wicked according to the literature. Most of them, not all. So these beings, whenever they get an opportunity, they like to torture others. So who will be their victims? Petas and beings in the hell. So they transform their bodies because they are sort of divine. Divine means uh, spirits, we call, maybe we may call in English, but actually they are beings, they have a subtle right matter. So they change their form and they, either they go into the hell and torture the hell beings who are due to suffering or into their past deeds, or they chase and hurt the Sampetas. I think you have listened, read in the literature that some petas are being chased by birds, eaten by birds. So these uh, things are there. So most, in most of the cases, they are the living beings of the Chatu Maharajika realm, mostly Gandabas, Kumbandas, Yakkas and all, uh, who transform their body and enjoy the torture. So torturing. And those beings also have a kamma to experience such things. So it's very easy for them to uh, yield their desires, that wicked desires and enjoy 
So those beings will be suffering as long as their, uh, their karma remains. So that is how the phenomenon works. But not to say that every phenomenon is such because some beings uh, we know in the literature are found like uh, uh, in the Peta world, some dogs and all, they, some figures just appear due to karma and they come and eat every day. So it seems like uh, some, some torturing can be caused only by karma itself. But in other realms, as Paramatta Deepani mentions, these are uh, beings of the Chatu Maharajika realm who enjoy the suffering of others. Yeah, uh, the second type you explained looks like the robots. It can be like pro program robots without consciousness. Yes, uh, without that consciousness. That is what I want and I forgot to mention at the beginning. Like a zombie, uh, yeah. Second, my second question is about uh, like in the case of Vairabhal Anuruddha, uh, even when he was a prince, uh, he is someone who did not know uh, uh, that uh, he did not understand the word nothing because he was he never experienced it. And uh, when, he, when he wanted uh, sweets to be set, uh, whenever he was playing with his friends, uh, it came to a point that uh, nothing else was left. So to teach him what is nothing, they sent an empty uh, vessel with a tower. But by the time it reached him and when he opened it, it was full of kyaun uh, or the sweet meats, traditional sweet meats. So uh, that is due to his karma. That is what I uh, read and heard and it's a commonly repeated story. Uh, so uh, now that sort of phenomenon, how to explain it? Uh, using the Kamaja, uh, is it Kamaja Ahar Rupa or Kamaja Utu, uh, Kamapacha Utu Jarupa? So that's what I have been explaining, like Chakravati's universal monarch's wheel also, it's produced by karma. Yeah. Uh, so it's very difficult, to, it's, it's Utujarupa, according to literature, it's Utuja. So karma, the, the, the question that I was discussing here is like, is it the Utujarupa that were already existing in the space, transformed into this sweet cakes or the wheel? Or is it the karma directly producing them newly? So I'm unable to explain that because we don't have much explanation on that. So, so these are Utuja Rupas affected by God. But in Anuruddha's case, actually I would categorize them as Chitta Pachya Utuja because they were created by the Deva, divine according to the story. They didn't just didn't appear. They were a creation of the God, the deity who was guarding the Kapilavattu. So, they seems to be Chitta Pachya Utuja, but Anuruddha's karma also affected. That I shall be discussing in the Rupa related with Chitta. Because in the Katavattu, we have a discussion on this in the third council. The discussion was going. Think about Bimbizara's entire mansion was made into gold by Venerable Pilindavacha. So, how, what was the reason? Now, it was a Chitta Pachya Utu. It was a creation of Venerable Pilindavacha's psychic powers. It, it, mind was affecting it. But it says that even the King Bimbisara had a merit in the past to have such amount of gold. I don't know what happened to the mansion after that. <laughs> Whether he took the gold or it disappeared. Uh, so, he had the merit. So, his merit was also a reason for that. So obviously Anuruddha's case, his merits was the main cause. But the story says it were not ordinary oil cakes, but divine oil cakes. Divine oil cakes means uh, either the Deva put the food he had or he either he created. I am not, uh, I don't have a a specific memory how the cake was like was did he put it or he created it if it was created it should be chitta pachya utuja if it was his food that he located then it is kamma pachya utuja of this divine being and he offered it to him because some there are stories that uh, one uh, man was brought to the divine realm by one of his uh, ex-wives or girlfriends who, 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 who passed away and was born in the divine realm and he was given the divine pleasures to enjoy all the divine pleasures for seven days or something uh, in the mansion. 
So it's possible that the dev devas could offer us some food. So uh, would like to taste if they offer. <laughs> so uh, they, he, so maybe he put his own oil cake into the plate, or he created it. Uh, it was not that it was a direct production of Anuruddha's karma, but Anuruddha's karma was a great supportive factor for this incident. Thank you very much. But there are many instances like that in the Buddhist literature, uh, and also even Sutra and the Nidhana Katas. Uh, so, uh, uh, I was trying to understand uh, with the uh, explanations you have given uh, how in each case uh, it happens because we, we cannot be analyzing all the cases, but then we may be able to get some guidelines uh, as to uh, figure out uh, uh, such situations because there are other cases where uh, never ending uh, serving of food from one bowl of uh, food. Yeah. Uh, is also coming in many places. Mm. Uh, so, how does it happen? So, th those are the kind of questions uh, that can arise with me try to analyze the uh, uh, generation of uh, new uh, Rupa with the uh, Arma or Chitta or uh, one of these other causes. So yeah, so, 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 to... so it's like uh, the, the finally it boils down to this to topic like either it's produced by karma or it is produced by Chitta of someone like the unending rise or anything. Finally, it boils down to these two opinions. It means already we have some Utuja Rupas, invisible Utuja Rupas in the space. Yeah. And these space Rupas are affected by karma or affected by the psychic Chitta. And when they are, they naturally produce stage Utuja Rupas, always keep on going in. And this phenomenon is affected by karma or affected by chitta and then instead of producing some subtle rupas they produce some gross rupas which suddenly pop up suddenly appear and which cannot be logically explained so that people feel oh something has special happened so that is the first explanation if we stick to the definition of te utuja rupas the second is it's not a transformation of the generation of Uttuja Rupas that have been already existing. It is a direct production of the karma. New Rupa is happening because of the karma. Or new Rupa is happening because of the Abhinya Chitta. And then this keeps on going in Uttuja, Uttuja generations after it's produced. Then karma is directly producing, Chitta is directly producing. Then it goes against the basic definition. But still, even we follow the second new definition what I am suggesting, still they can be called Utuja Rupas because there is another definition in the Theravada literature. Any Rupa which exists or which goes, goes, goes out of the body or any Rupa which exists out of the body is, should be considered Utuja Rupa. So even the Kamma is directly producing them, Chitta is directly producing them, since they are happening outside the body, they still can be called Uttuja Rupa. So these are the two questions. Whatever the case, whatever the incident, we go in, this is the two questions, ultimate questions that cannot be solved, that, that has to be solved. Either is a transformation of the lineage of Uttuja Rupa that has already been existing in the outside world, or either, either it is a direct new production, new happiness. So if it is a new happening, that lineage has a beginning. That lineage has a beginning then it keeps on going and it ends at a certain stage. So these are the two questions that I, have, I was discussing. Whatever the incident you go in, whatever the story we go in, the question will end up in these ultimate two questions. Uh, anyway, that uh, actually we are getting into a very controversial area where uh, the materialistic people will probably will have, uh, be up in arms if we say that. Uh, so I don't want to go there. Uh, so I would like to stop this discussion here. And thank you very much and much benefits to you, uh, Devan Sarnai Swami. Yeah, so, so that's why I was telling in the lecture, if I preach this in the, into a different audience, this would be like, they would say what I'm talking, they would say this is, this is nonsense, they would call. Uh, but uh, that's why I said it is, it, this is a discussion only that can happen within the Theravada borders uh, because we cannot have any proof or this seems like going beyond the natural 
physical uh, norms that have been established in the world. Okay, I forgot to ask about Kamacharupa earlier because the other three, they have three po possibilities to produce Kamacharupas. What about karma jarupa? It's only two. They're roughly from karma and karma as they cause another karma to cause the karma jarupa. Yeah, it's a tough one, <laughs> as usual. So, uh, karma produces karma jarupa. Now, you're asking about, now in the fourfold category, uh, is there a special now directly produced by karma? Is there a specific thing that is affected by this? That's your question, right? Is a relationship for the Kama Jarupas, right? So, for is the it, last three, right? Jaitaja, yeah, it's it's Jaitaja, clear. Aharaja, it's yeah. clear. But so they have three possibilities, right? So if you're asking, so is it is it like Kama Jarupas? Is there a real relationship, right? First is. From Kama Jaruba, how many possible ways for the Kama Jaruba to be produced? And within that, any relationship with the three? Yeah. Uh, I have to think on this. Uh, surely, Utuja, Aharja, no. I don't really see any relationship. Because Utuja, Ut, uh, Tejo to Kama, Ahara to Kama, uh, there is no direct relationship. Uh, so we don't find a linear relationship with Kamajarupas with them. Chitta. Uh, seems like not, because Chitta is not directly affecting the karma. Yes, we can say the Chitta, the karma is done, the Chitta in which the karma arises affects it. But it's not, not to be considered about relationship. Then, Kama to Kama is there, that's obviously. For example, what we discussed last week. Kama, ja, uh, kama for example, Dana. Right? Dana, Kama producing Kamaja Rupa. Right? Directly saying no. Chitta, Utu, Ahara have no relationship in producing Kamaja Rupa. No direct relationship. It doesn't come into my mind actually. Right? No such a thing. Like as it happened to other three. Right? As it happened to uh, other three, the relationship. We don't see a relationship of Kamaja Rupas uh, because we found three possible ways of Chittaja and Utuja and Aharaja. It seems Kamaja is one only. Right? It's one. But we can have a special case here. I thought there were two. Uh, yes, how? One is directly from karma, right? Yeah. And karma is the indirect. This is karma affecting another karma. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to talk now. I just put a star. Anyway, it should. It can be second one. So this is always happening. Uh, karma, dana. <clears throat> this dana is affected by another Kama, these Kama Jarupas, right? Or, yeah, that is the normal procedure. This is also possible, Kama affecting the other Kama to produce Kama Jarupa. Hmm? But this second procedure, we have a specific exact case. That is, we give Dana, someone give Dana, and this Dana is producing Kama Jarupa. Right? And this dana is being affected by sila. Sila gives a certain trait, lives in the mind. This trait is affecting the dana. So what happens? The capacity of the dana increase, the capacity to give a long life. So therefore, the kamaja rupas produced by dana can last long. If this effect was not there, for example, if he was practicing killing living beings, there is no such a positive effect. It's a negative effect. It's a positive effect. A negative effect is given. Then what happens? 
when this dana is producing kamaj rupas these kamaj rupas would not have that capacity it reduces actually reduces so these kamaj rupas are different from them they could last long while they couldn't so this is it kamma affecting the kamma sila another kamma affecting the dana kamma which produces rupa so what happens these kamaj rupas are different than akusala affecting another kamma yes so this is the second way kamma affecting a kamma which produce kamma rupa now called kamma producing a kamma kamma affecting a kamma so therefore we have two in uh, kamma rupa yes kamma directly producing rupa and kamma affecting another kamma which produces kamma rupa yeah you know from the uh, right hand uh, diagram you drew kamma affecting kamma look at the board here so kamma affecting kamma rupa and kamma affecting uh, dana kamma but if you draw that lines right there what kamma affecting the kamma rupa is it considered the first category already that is a direct uh, direct way to produce rupa No, so this no. This one is production is here. Some this because say this happens in the same most in the same life. This kind of effect, right? If someone practices I done, yeah, this this second effect, right? So mostly it happens. No, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, agree. yeah. What I'm saying is, but I'm going to explain this 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 one, right? So I'm going to explain yeah. that. So this this happens mostly in the same life. Now think about. someone has practiced sila in a past life long time before and then or a good dana for example very good like looking at someone uh, a virtuous person with with bright eyes and like with a pleasant mind the common the, the doctrine says samana anand dasana looking at someone's like this it would give a good eyesight in future right it give, give a good eyesight in the future so this kind of uh, for example we we may say uh, looking with a pleasant mind at a buddha or like like a virtuous person that was done long time before then after some in another life he gave a dana and he is born as a human being now think about his chakku think about his chakku if that chakku is produced by the dana possibility is there this karma rather than affecting that could affect the kamaj rupa which is produced by another karma to be more sensitive possibility is there possibility rather than affecting the karma to produce sensitive rupa this directly affects the kamaj rupas possibility is there so that's why i drew such a thing clear okay so uh i think we now the time has up time is up so uh we today we discussed about the kamaj rupas uh, sorry rupas related to karma and uh, some rupas which are been affected or with the linear causation and also we discussed the how kama pachya utuja rupa and a question was also made like how to explain this and these two definitions uh, the possibilities are there uh, which i am unable to give you an exact answer for that and uh, yeah and also at uh, the last question uh, kamma kamaj rupas can also be affected by some other karma right so uh, all this shows that whatever it's in the world material world a production of causes it gives the uh, rise to the doctrine of paticca samuppada cause and effect and it eventually opens us the path to understand the non self so i hope you enjoy the lecture with this merit of uh, discussing dhamma may all of us be able to understand dhamma deeply precisely and attain nibbana as quick as possible and this may may this merit also helps to sustain the buddha sasana for a long period buddha sasanang chiran tithatu buddha sasanang chiran tithatu 
बुद्ध शासना चिरा तिठत साधु साधु साधु